Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the uh, Public Works Committee meeting for Tuesday, January 28th, 2014. I'd like to remind everyone that uh, if you have a cellular phone, please uh, turn it to the off or vibrate position. And also, if you need to t take a phone call or make a phone call, would you take it outside into the hallway, please? And I thank you for that. Next item I have here is a roll call and determination of quorum. Brenda, if you please. Estes. Here. Nordstrom. Here. Wright. Here. Scott. Here. Clayton. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Now I'll entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. First of all, I'll look to staff to see if there's any changes, alterations to the agenda. Seeing no lights. Is there anyone on the committee that wants to change or amend the, uh, um, the agenda? Motion has been made by uh, Alderwoman Scott, second by Alderman Clayton to uh, adopt the agenda. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, and the agenda is adopted. Now is the time for members of the public to discuss or express concerns to the committee on any issue, not limited to items on the agenda. Action will not be taken at this meeting on any issue not on the agenda except by placement on the agenda by unanimous vote of the alderman present. I do not have any general public comments at this time that are for items not on the agenda, and I'm looking to the audience to see if I missed anybody. Not seeing anyone. Now is the time we move into our consent items, items one through 10, and I'll open up public comment period at this time. And we'll start with item number eight is Mr. James Huff of Kelly Baja. Mr. Huff, you have the floor. And what we do to give you a heads up on this is we give you three minutes to make a presentation and we'll go from there. Thank you. You have the floor, Mr. Huff. And Public if you would list. introduce yourself and your uh, aff affiliation to the city, please. Right. I'm Jim Huff. I'll take less than three minutes. Okay. Tom and Mary Helen uh, are unable to attend. They're out of town for this week. Uh, Tom Stanton and I are here. I'd like to make the following comments. I agree with the needs for the replacement of a common sewer line for the three homes on Calle Baja. However, if the city is to receive an easement on our privately shared drive and then ownership of the line, the city should also share a portion of the cost to install a sewer line. Now, we have one common lift station for all three homes. Under the proposal, each home will have to install their own holding tank and lift station at their own expense. I take it everyone has read the engineering recommendations. Again, I agree with the need for the project but there, but I do have reservations and concerns about details and cost. That's all. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Mr. Huff. Thank you. Now I'll turn to Mr. Tom Stanton on item number eight. Mr. You, Stanton, um, good thank afternoon, you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Same same ground rules. I'm Tom Stanton, four one three two Calle Baja Street, and. I'll take way less than three minutes. I was rather surprised to see this item on the agenda. I've never agreed to anything the engineer has put in writing to this board. I do not accept what he says. It has not been tested. If the Helens want to put in a new system, I have no objection, and I would cooperate with them. But at this point, I'm not ready to accept what the engineer says is required. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stanton. I have one more speaker request form for item number 10, and this must be Mr. Kesloff. It's your turn. Again, the same ground rules, three minutes. Mr. Chairman and committee, can I have the rest of their time? <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, Bill. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but, but thank you. And, and I will try to keep this short and simple, but 
basically this RFP, and I don't know if you have the RFP request in front of you or not, but you should have a copy of uh, my recommendations to that RFP. The, simply put, that RFP cannot be fulfilled in the time period as indicated on that RFP. This is a request for a complete, what they call a reconnaissance survey, and uh, there's only about seven to eight weeks, and plus we're coming into March. It require a lot of field work and so forth. Um, two, <clears throat> this kind of complete survey would cost north of forty to fifty thousand dollars to accomplish. We have presently nine thousand dollars to to spend right now. So, <clears throat> the rec the recommendations that I had made. And I talked to the Office of History this morning, Chris Nelson, who's our uh, representative, and Chris was kind enough to email his recommendations, and he also uh, sent a copy to Sarah, and Sarah's here. Um, and so <clears throat> I think now we're all on the same page. I think that, and you can have a chance to ask community planning this, but <clears throat> we will probably end up taking and reformatting uh, the, the request uh, for bid and break it down into two phases. So phase one would be gathering all the information that it's gonna take for a complete survey. The survey, <clears throat> we can go out for more grant money uh, in February and March and get the grant money. Uh, the Office of History really wants this survey to be done we want it to be done uh, because it's been 20 years since one has been done. So it's really critical for the city and for preservation to continue to make uh, intelligent decisions. Um, with that said, uh, and I think community planning is gonna confirm this, is to not approve and move forward with this RFP uh, as written. What I'll, what I'll leave with you, if I may. Are the recommendations breaking this into two phases? it was emailed to Jeannie and then Jeannie emailed it and forwarded it to me. That's why they had it on five sides. So. Uh, Thank you. Anything else, Mr. Keslov? Thank you, Mr. Keslov. Anything else? No, I just, uh, I've been an active member of West Boulevard and, and that community and preservation for 10 plus years. This was called to my attention uh, and felt compelled because it was the wrong thing to do, to go out and misrepresent the fact that we only have $9,000 and we can't do this. And I'm not trying to show any disrespect. We've had a change in some employees in the community. We've had a breakdown in communications with the Preservation Commission. But I think all that can now be resolved and we can move forward. Thank you, Bill. I don't have any other speaker request forms for items one through 10. I just wanna make sure I'm not skipping or missing someone at this time. And all right, that closes the public comment period on items one through 10. Now what we'll do is ask the committee to uh, see if there's any items to remove from the consent uh, items of the agenda. And I will recognize Brad Estes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to pull items number eight and 10. Thank you. Items number eight and number 10 have been pulled. Not seeing any other request lights, either from the committee or staff members. I'll entertain a motion to adopt the agenda with the uh, consent items, excuse me, uh, to adopt the uh, consent items, excluding items eight and 10. Motion has been made by Alderman Clayton, second by Alderman Scott to remove items number 10 and adopt the remainder of the consent items. 
Those in favor say aye. aye. Or excuse me, excuse me, pardon me, I've jumped the gun here a little bit. Uh, any discussion on that motion? Not seeing any. The motion is there, all those in favor of the motion say aye. aye. Those opposed? The consent items have been adopted. Now we'll move to item number eight. And I'll read that into this in the, in this item into the record. This is uh, authorize a public pressure sewer system for properties located along Khaled Baha Street, located in Rapid City, South Dakota. And first of all, if I may direct my first question is to staff, who would like to volunteer? Uh, City Engineer Dale Tech, please. You have the floor. Would you like to m make some comments at this time? No, I'm, <clears throat> I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. I thought you had a question for me. Okay. Um, first of all, uh, are you familiar with the uh, comments that have been made by the, uh, uh, the two uh, gentlemen that spoke on this item? I'm not familiar with the comments. I'm familiar with the project or the proposed project, rather. Okay. And um, the question I have is this is essentially a forced main going through the property and to as I'm understanding this now is that we have two property owners that are concerned about this development going through their property. Yeah, a little background. There's an existing private lift station, if you will, that three properties are hooked to that uh, pumps and discharges to the city gravity system. That system has failed. Um, in an effort to get a system back in there, it has to be a pressurized system. They can't gravity flow or they go right into Canyon Lake. So uh, they uh, retained an engineer. He's worked uh, with both the property owners as well as city staff to come up with uh, an alternate design for a pressurized system. Uh, in this instance, the um, there's not a common lift station. Each property would have their own lift station, uh, which is kind of the standard of today. We've got a couple of those that exist in town that are relatively new and, and seem to work well. Uh, I think the biggest thing to consider here is this has always been a private main. Um, and the, the reason it's on the agenda today is the city will accept the pressurized portion of the main. It will become a, a city utility, if you will, and the city will provide the maintenance in the future to make sure that it's functioning properly. Uh, we believe that's important um, as th these property owners won't have the wherewithal to be able to do that in the future. Uh, I think it protects both the city's interest as well as the property owner's interest. The reason that it's on the agenda today is that that's what's required for our criteria manual. If there's a pressurized system, it has to be approved by the council. I, and um, Okay. I just wanted a little clarification uh, on that and you know, give us a little background and gentlemen we may be coming to you for questions uh, so please stand by. Uh, first I'll recognize Alderman Clayton. You have the floor. Thank you Mr. Chair. One of the things loud today. Uh, if I could ask some questions of Dale please. Dale can you help us understand I, I think I read in here we're talking about 1200 feet of, of pressurized main and it, if I can start with what I know and then we'll, we'll let you fill in the blanks what I don't understand. I understand individual lift stations, so presently I, I would imagine there is some gravity system from the individual residences into um, a single holding tank and then a lift station out. I, I guess a couple of things. One, I'd like to know what, what is a pressurized main and, and then two, why does it make more sense to have this pressurized main with three individual lift stations rather than have uh, basically a replacement of, of what's there now? Mr. Tech. Answer to your first question, a pressurized main is just what it says. Most sewer mains are gravity. The, the waste water flows into it and it takes it downhill. Well, on these properties there's no downhill to go anywhere except into Canyon Lake and we don't want that to happen with their wastewater flows. And apparently back in the late 60s, early 70s when these properties were constructed, the same thing was acknowledged that there's not a sewer main with gravity anywhere near here. They're going to have to pump up the hill to get into a, a gravity main. So a pressurized sewer main is just that. It is sewage that is under pressure that gets lifted up to a point where it can gravity flow into the gravity mains. 
Um, Could I interrupt you for just, so just another name then for a, a lift station? Well, the lift kind station of? is the the part that pressurizes it and, and shoves it, it up the pipe. Okay. So, all right. So they're they're interrelated and, and they are the the thing about having the the current system is you have both gravity service lines that two of the properties drain down to the third, and then it gets collected in the holding tank and pumped up. By doing this, you eliminate those gravity lines too. So the proposal is if you have just one force main going up, they can all directly connect to it and then push up. They don't have to worry about maintaining that gravity portion of their service lines down to a central point. So in effect, you're, you or the property owner is saving cost by not having two things that they've got to maintain, both a pressurized uh, lift station and a gravity main. So. As I said, there's there's two areas of town that have this very system, and it, it works well. Okay, so if I could put words in your mouth for just a second. So there's a benefit. By, by putting in a system like this, we, we eliminate uh, a vast majority of, of that gravity system right now for the, the two homeowners, and everybody connects into the pressurized main directly, and thereby it, it's, it's a benefit to the homeowners. Yes, I believe so. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Alderman Clayton. We'll now recognize Alderman Wright. Jim and Tom, have you got your questions answered, or do you want to discuss this with staff here today? Or Tom, Tom has a question. Go ahead, Tom. To the microphone, please. Wait, there's no problem. To the microphone, please. It, it, it's all recorded. Mr. Stanton, yeah, yeah, if you'll come to the podium, thank you. Thank you. There's no problem with the gravity portion of this at all. So it's not a benefit. It's a huge expense is what we're talking about. The gravity from the individual homes to the one holding tank or the pressurized tank, that's fine. So it's not a benefit. Question for the staff. Do you have any other questions, Jim? That were... No, no questions. Would a single lift station, single tank be still acceptable? And the issue is? What's failed on this current property owner's property? Is that the deal? Correct. I, you know, you've got the person, and I believe the, the request and the summary talks about the the owner, and they're not here today. Where the the lift station is, they don't necessarily want that. I don't believe, and I think they're more agreeable to doing the system the way that it's described. It, to have everyone on their own individual, so they don't have a liability, if you will, on their property for having a holding tank with other people's flows coming to it and be responsible for the pump as well. Mr. Wright, you still have the floor. Is, Tom, did you have another comment? Go ahead. You know, again, I don't want to get into a big legal thing, but it's been there for 40 years and there's every right that it remained there. Uh, it's not up to that individual owner to decide that he no longer wants something that is grandfathered there. Uh, there's no liability, and it's a shared expense. When there's been a problem with the pump, it's been shared without any problem. So what their preference is and what the legal rights are aren't necessarily the same. Okay. And the cost is tremendous. I would uh, only say that this appears to me some more discussion before we take action as council members, so I think we should make a motion to defer this to council without action, or what do you want to do? Let's, uh, before I take into consideration of your suggested motion, uh, since you've spoken uh, the, uh, just for the audience, uh, understanding is that once a council member has spoken on a subject, we're not allowed to make a motion at, at that time. But we can recognize another council member and then come back to the, the original council member that made the suggestion. So I'll re at this time, I'll recognize Alder, Alder Wim Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Dale Tech, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It should be noted that there aren't any easements that are recorded for any of this stuff, and that's part of the other issue is 
yeah, they may have been using it for 40 years, but there aren't any recorded easements for this. And that's another issue that this will hopefully take care of is they'll be able to get the easements in place and have the system within the easement area. They don't even know for sure where all those lines are located today. So that's problematic from a private property standpoint is not knowing where someone else's line crosses yours, so on and so forth. So just thought I'd throw that out there. Thank you. Um, we'll now recognize Alderwoman Scott. Thank you, Mr. Chair. May I direct some questions to Mr. Dale Tech, please? You may. Dale, just for clarification purposes, when I read the documentation, there are three existing homeowners that are feeding the current lift station, the holding tank lift station system. Um, but it also mentioned a fourth one. Is that for future growth or? No, there, there's another home that is on the very east end of this near where this thing outlets. We're not sure where their sewer goes. All right. That has yet to be determined. So I believe the letter says there may be a fourth property involved. We just don't know yet. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. And then I'm, I'm trying to get clarification on what we as the Public Works Committee are trying to consider today and vote on. We are strictly only authorizing a public pressure sewer system that the city will take over and maintain. Is that correct and that we're really not granting or approving or disapproving any of the private property issues with this system? Yes, you are correct as far as the pressurized portion of the main will be under city maintenance forever. The private lift stations that each individual one will have to have will still be private. The, it's their responsibility to make sure that they're functioning property and it's their responsibility to maintain them forever. So, yes, what's on the agenda today is just to accept that common main that connects all three of them until it dumps into the city uh, gravity system as public. So it's the 1,200 feet that services or runs along the property for these three properties and possibly a fourth, but it's just the public right-of-way portion or the city-owned portion that we're considering. Where does that leave these property owners? Is this something that has to come back for approval from the city for these individual properties? It, is that why they're concerned with it? Is because they need city approval for any modifications they make? No, as I understand their concern is, is cost. They'll each have their own individual pump, which is smaller than obviously the one that <clears throat> all three of them are currently hooked into. So it's a cost to them individually to be able to hook all that up and then have a, uh, a private force main, a smaller diameter force main to go from their pump up to the common force main, which will be the city's. So I think, as I understand their comments today, that's their biggest concern is the cost that they're going to have in what they need to put in place to be able to make their sewer functional. Whereas I believe, um, Tom is saying, well, there's nothing wrong with the old one. We just need to replace the pump and minor cost. Well, we don't know that, and they don't know that either. The, the, I believe the engineer that is representing the, the other property owners is here and might be able to address that, but I don't know what the issues are with the old system other than it's failed. And that, thank you, because that was the other clarifying point. The only reason this is even being considered is that the current system is in failure mode. Correct. Uh, is the engineer that designed this here today and available to answer some questions? Mr. Chair, may I? You may. Uh, if you'll recognize your, uh, yourself and give us uh, how your affiliation with this project is. Uh, Mitch Kirksman from Renner Associates in Rapid City. Uh, Tom and Mary Helen uh, hired us to, to, to fix this. Could you spell your last name? Uh, K-E-R-T-Z-M-A-N. Okay. Thank you. Alderman Scott, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, can you enlighten us as, as far as what we're trying to understand, or at least what I'm trying to understand, is the decision that this committee is supposed to be trying to make today versus the private owner's decisions that they have to incur versus what we are trying to appro uh, approve today? Well, I think we're talking about two separate things. Um, the, the, the city rules require that council approve a force main. 
Um, the, 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 as far as getting people hooked to the forest pain is a separate issue. So what's before you today is to say yes or no to a, force, a public forest main. The, the details of design have yet to be worked out and the costs have yet to be finalized. All right, thank you for the clarification. Um, thank you, I, I, I'm ready to make a motion but I'll wait till it comes up, thank you. There may be other questions from some other people. So. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I yield the floor. Thank you, Alderman Scott. If I may recognize Mr. Stanton, is am I correct? That oh, I'm sorry, Mr. If I can go to Mr. Huff, please. Uh, I'm sorry. If I can go to Mr. Huff, please. He, I recognized him first. I apologize. I'm getting my toms mixed up here. Well, first, a point of clarification. In fact, uh, there is no fourth home hooked up to that system. We verified that. So we're only talking about three homes on Calle Baja. We've already verified that. And when we had a meeting with the engineer, they agreed and we agreed that we would, first of all, identify where those lines are. Because when the homes were built, it was outside the city limits. And that was 40 years ago. And they've had one person out, Jim's, private to locator service and because of the weather they haven't been able to locate the lines adequately. They may be located one line in part but that's all. But I did want to clarify that there's only three homes involved. There's not a fourth home. Thank you. Mr. Stanton. Uh, Ms. Scott, if I understood what you were inquiring about is we're only dealing with the city portion. The one thing that was left out that's quite important is, as I understood it from the engineer, it's the property owners that have to pay for that 1,200 feet. It's not the city. So once you make that decision, you have dumped a ton of debt or responsibility on the three property owners. So it does make a difference. Thank you, Mr. Denton. Well, the chair will now recognize Alderman Estes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to make a motion to continue this to the next public works meeting. Second. And I'd like to keep the floor if I could. Second it. Motion made by uh, Alderman Estes, second by uh, Alderman Wright to continue this item. Uh, you certainly have the floor, Mr. Estes. Thank you, Mr. President. I, uh, you know, I looked this over and I kind of looked at the agenda today and um, I didn't know that there were going to be two different opinions or, uh, to this particular um, topic. It, uh, something that were, for me to understand it, when you got gravity, you got, and then you might have a lift station that just takes sewage vertically and then goes goes gravity again or you, you've got force mains something I'd really like to go out and take a look at and get on a chalkboard I want to understand the system and, and the whole thing um, because it, it does uh, uh, account for a significant financial expense for these homeowners um, but I do have a couple questions if I if I could if um, and I don't care who who I, if the system has failed, are people living in these homes, or what's what's going on with the system right now? Mr. If I can direct that question to uh, City Engineer Dale Tech. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Currently, um, the holding tank for the existing lift station—I'm sorry, the wet well for the existing lift station—is being used as a holding tank, and they're having it pumped every week. So it's still collecting sewage, but they're having to pump it because there's something wrong with the force main from from the gravities all the way up to the other gravity. So they're currently pumping their sewage. Mr. Tech, if I may clarify the pumping part of it, you're talking about a septic hauler that's coming in and manually pumping that out, correct? Okay, thank you. Mr. Estes, you have the floor. Well, okay, thanks. I, I guess that's pretty much it. I mean, I, I actually years ago looked at buying the house of the people that aren't here, and, and I mean, it's tight quarters. You're right, right along Canyon Lake. Um, and I'd like to work on some type of a resolution where everybody can get along because you, 
uh, everybody drives through the, every, uh, your neighbor's yards and, and uh, it's close quarters and I, I would like to get everybody to see if we could work out a situation amenable to everybody. Um, Mr. Tick. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. W one other thing that hasn't been mentioned today that's important is this also, part of this is it's a non-conforming service line the, the way it is now. You've got multiple people using the same line and part of the purpose of having the city own that line is that takes care of that ownership issue or the non-conforming issue and we struggle with these all over town where you've got four or five people hooked into the same common service line be it gravity or force main and this will help clean that mess up too probably is what I'm to say. thank you i'll uh, i'm done thanks yep um, Alderman Wright. So my understanding is the discharge main is failed or there's a problem with it, correct? Yeah, I don't know what. Are I, you too I aware of that? Speak to Did that. you know that the, the discharge main where all your sewage is gravity fed to from there to the discharge point is plugged or there's a problem? Miss, Mr. Senton, if you use the microphone again, please. Thank you. I don't think anybody has determined exactly what the problem is. But it's being pumped. You understand? There is, I understand that I'm paying a third of the pumping once a week. I understand that that's working okay. But whether it's repairable, I, that has never been determined. Okay. That's my question. Thank you. Unless Jim wants to add to it. Any, any follow up, Mr. Huff? Um, yeah, Mr. Huff, Jim Huff, any follow-up? Oh, I would agree with Tom on that. <clears throat> the primary problem is that the grinder pump, and to complicate things a little bit more, Brad, I'll explain something. <laughs> they call these grinder stations, actually grind up whatever's in the sewer line and have positive pressure to, to move them up to the city line. Over time, the sewer line <clears throat> will deteriorate, both because of electricity in the line and the uh, uh, electrolysis that takes place. And that's what happened at the site of the collection tank. So that the pump is actually broken away from the pipe and there's no way to reattach it. So that, that issue is there now. But Tom and I, and with Tom's question, if I can clarify for you, Tom, is, is the line damaged all the way to the city sewer line? We don't know. In fact, the, the drawings submitted by the engineer that was retained are just swag estimates as to where the lines are, because no one has that. The city doesn't have it, and we don't have it. So that was the reason for the agreement at our last meeting, when all three households were there, was that we would identify where the lines are first. And that's in process. Thank you. Question? Thank you. Um, if I can, uh, Mr. Tech, if I can go to our the city engineer that's, uh, or excuse me, to the engineer that's working privately for this. Is it Mr. Kurzman? Do you understand what's going on here with, with the comments going back and forth? Yes, I'm, I'm following it. Um, <clears throat> Mainline has made several attempts to fix that thing, and they can't fix it. It's failed. They're, they're pumping sewage right now. Um, it's going to be expensive. It's, it's not going to be a cheap project, and I can't make it cheaper. I mean, it is what it is. And, and I'm just trying to make sure that I totally understand who is going to be brunt, bearing the brunt of the cost? From what I understand, it will be the three homeowners essentially bearing it. Thank you. Thank you for your time. And I guess I do have one other question for you is that have you had the opportunity to visit with all the homeowners that are involved in we this? We had one meeting, yes. One meeting, okay. Very good. And, and the, the reason we made the request to get this in front of council now is because we're out there doing the survey and the utility locating now and we're going to need to design quick and approvals quick because they're pumping sewage right now yes so i wanted to get this in ahead of ahead of the game 
to get the approval done for the main so we can continue and not get hung up. It, it appears that I've been premature. Thank you. If you'll just stand by, I'm going to go to um, City Engineer uh, Dale Tech. Uh, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate what Mr. Kurtzman has to say about that. Um, back to the repair. It, since it's a non-conforming line, technically the city or utility maintenance cannot issue a permit for them to repair that line um, since it meets the definition of non-conforming. So that's another reason to do the project is they don't know what's wrong with it. It's broken. It's failed. They might be digging up on somebody else's property to try to fix it where they don't have a, an easement in place or a right in place, and city can't grant the permit to do that, to, to allow that encroachment, if you will. So just wanted to clarify that as well. Thank you. Um, several things are going through my mind. Anyway, Alderman Clayton, you have the floor. Thanks, Mr. Chair. And, and Dale, thank you, because that, that answered the question I was about to ask about why replace instead of repair. Can you help us understand, when we talk about non-conforming, in how many different ways does it non-conform where it creates the situation where we just could not you know, seek or be granted permission to go in there to make the repair? Well, this thing non-conforms in two ways as far as I'm concerned. You've got multiple people hooked to it, which is one non-conforming, and then it goes across other properties, which there don't appear to be any easements recorded for that, for that line. So those are the two ways that it, it non-conforms, in my opinion. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'll yield. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, before I make my comments, uh, we'll recognize Alderman Wright. Any environmental liability since this is so close to Canyon Lake? As far as I'm concerned, that is a concern. If something were to happen and they, the, the pumpers didn't get there in time and we had an overflow, it's going to go right into the lake. And that could be a penalty or a fine or what? could certainly be a violation. However, it would be a violation from, from the individual property owners from the state. It, I don't believe the city would have any liability in that since it's a private system. Well, my only parting comment is I think a two-week delay is absolutely essential to get all these issues discussed and back to us. And that may not be long enough, but I'll support the issue of two weeks. Mr. Tech and Mr. Kersman, if, if I can ask both of you gentlemen on that, the, the, the uh, communication between the property owners and yourselves will be taking place within the next two weeks. Can you tell, uh, and I'll address the question to you from Mr. Mr. Kersman first, is that who would be at that meeting that you're intending? Make sure that they're all there. And um, Mr. Tech, have you got an, a, a concept of who would be at that, your, the city's portion of that meeting? Who would be representing the city? My apologies. Yeah, it would be our engineering staff. Um, Michelle Schweitzer, probably, she's been the project contact on this, so she would be involved in those conversations. And I, <clears throat> excuse me, and I believe she has talked to at least one of the property owners in the past, so we'd be more than happy to sit in on, on a, a meeting. And, and uh, between the two of you gentlemen, uh, could, who would be setting up the meeting? Would that be the city's responsibility to set up the meeting, or would that be Mr. Kersman? I believe we would defer to the, the individuals to try to set that up, and we would participate. I'd like to set that meeting up after we get the utilities located so we know what we have to work with. And then one other thing that I'll be requesting when you come back in the following two weeks, providing that the committee goes along with this motion and as well as the full council, is that if you can have a little bit more detailed description of the existing pressurized line or the force main, as I refer to it as, as what, what you're encountering, uh, encountering over there, and um, just give us a little bit more background on that, on that line. I can fill you in on what's there now. <clears throat> um, there are three houses gravitating to the Helen's backyard. There's a sump there and a grinder pump that's failed. The force main going up to city sewer is, I believe, two-inch steel. Somewhere near the pit, it has failed, and we... The only way to answer the question about the main going up the city is to excavate the whole thing. It's, it's an unknown. It's not mapped. It's not, not recorded anywhere. So the line is there is a, a 30 to 40 year old steel line that 
unknown condition. Understand. I understand what you're contending with, um, and I appreciate that. Um, the, uh, the, I just had a question posed to me: Is have you the capability of cameraing, putting a camera in that line? No, not not on a line that small. Yes, I didn't think so, but I just wanted to get it confirmed by a professional. Sure. Thank you. Um, uh, I'm not seeing any more lights or not any more comments on this time, so the motion in front of us at this point is to continue this item till the next Public Works Committee meeting in approximately two weeks. I don't have my calendar in front of me. I apologize for the not getting the date. So, Brenda, if you'll be working with me on that. Um, those in favor of the motion, say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Thank you. Motion carries. That's all right. Um, thank you, folks. Appreciate your comments and input. Next item is item number 10, is to authorize the staff to advertise a request for proposals to resurvey the West Boulevard Historic District. And the chair will recognize Patsy Horton. Good afternoon. Um, back in January, the Historic Preservation Commission um, ha held a special um, meeting just so that they could come up with our work program for the 2013-2014 grant application. And so from that, staff went forward with the RFP that you see on the agenda today. We did receive comments from the State Historic Preservation Office about the proposal. I know it's a short time frame, but our grant cycle ends the end of May, so we wanted to get some information out there. What we found in the past with other RFPs, if a consultant that's proposing to do the work sees that there's a, you know, some potential over expenditures or some additional time required. They put that information in the proposal before the contract is actually executed. So what we're requesting today is that you move this RFP forward without recommendation so that we can come up with a phasing plan as requested so that we can still keep this project moving forward. I know that, um, the survey that we're talking about is an actual reconnaissance survey, which is a little more detailed than what um, Mr. Kesloff has, had uh, referenced earlier. But also in that special meeting back in January, there was some discussion from the commission itself that maybe they could go out and do some additional work, you know, some photos, some um, descriptions about what's changed um, since, you know, the last resurvey so that they could make better decisions with the 11-1 reviews. They still have that ability to do that. They're a volunteer group. Those are some things that they can do as a volunteer group to do those surveys themselves so that they've got better information. This actually will give us more detailed information based on what the state really needs as well. So we're asking you to move this forward without recommendation. We'll make some changes so that we've got some phasing included in there, some potential to extend it to the next grant cycle as well so that we can still keep moving forward with that survey. Thank you, Patsy. You're welcome. I'll, I'll uh, stand by for questions. I'll recognize uh, Alderman Wright. I make a motion we move this forward to council without recommendation. Motion second by uh, Alderman Scott uh, to move to the next city council meeting, which is this Monday night, without recommendation. And the chair will recognize Alderman Scott. Thank you, Mr. Chair. May I ask um, Patsy Horton a question, please? You may. Patsy, you said that you're going to be able to modify this. My only question, because I am supporting the, the, the um, sending to council without recommendation, is you'll be able to make those changes by Monday? Absolutely. All right. Thank you. I yield the floor. Good question. Thank you, Alderwoman Scott. Uh, motion is not seeing any other lights. Uh, motion on the floor is to move this to the full council without recommendation. Those in favor say aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Now we'll move on to the remainder of the agenda, which is non-consent items 11 through 15. And I'll open a public comment period to items, uh, the speakers, and I have a few request speakers forms for here for item number 13. If I may start off with Rhea Landholm, if you'll come to the podium and recognize your us, your, yourself for us, please, and um, your affiliation with the city. Sure. Uh, my name is Rhea Landholm, and I work for Destination Rapid City. Um, Dan is actually out of the country at the moment, um, so I have a statement that I will read, um, and this is in his words. 
Destination Rapid City will make available $500,000 in matching funds to help the city create more parking for people who work in and visit downtown Rapid City. This $500,000 commitment is in addition to the previous $2 million Destination Rapid City committed for parking in the core of downtown. While Destination Rapid City has no location restrictions, the parking should service the core downtown and be provided free to the public. Meetings earlier this month with the parking enforcement staff indicated a parking need on the west side of downtown. The staff also indicated a large part of the parking problem is downtown employees doing the parking shuffle. Destination Rapid City believes the proposed parking expansion in Memorial Park West would service downtown employees and be easily accessible and visible to downtown shoppers and visitors. We are working with community partners in the area who have, who have indicated if this lot becomes available, it would be a huge asset to their companies. I-190 is a main gateway to downtown Rapid City. With landscaping improvements on the corner and highly visible parking, this greatly improves Rapid City's image and invites visitors downtown with free parking and a free trolley. This lot also gives RVs and buses an opportunity for free parking to visit our community. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lisdome. I appreciate that. Uh, Chair will now recognize some folks that are opposed to this suggestion, and that is start with Suzanne Martley. Again, ground rules simply, Suzanne, is three minutes for your presentation, and if you'll recognize yourself for the committee. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Suzanne Martley. I'm the Executive Director for Friends of Rapid City Parks. We are opposed to this particular parking plan for a variety of reasons. First, the tennis court and parking lot at the foot of 8th Street that are targeted to be redone into a new parking lot were proposed to be torn up and unpaved as part of the Central High School expansion into the floodway, which you recall was quite a controversy in 2010. If any lesson is to be learned from that embarrassing, if temporary, predicament that the high school found itself in because it was proposing to expand into park land designated thereby uh, by statute, um, we flurried around, was there going to be a vote, was there going to be uh, lobbying the legislature to change the law. Friends of Rapid City Parks negotiated in good faith with the school district and the then elected representatives of the city to do a trade, tear up the tennis court, tear up the parking lot, turn that back to permeable greenway, and then you can encroach into the floodway with the gymnasium. The area known as West Memorial Park has been on the docket for beautification in the Omaha Street Corridor, Corridor Beautification Plan for at least seven, eight, maybe ten years as far as I know. Uh, Friends of Rapid City Parks has always supported the proposal to do the stormwater management and beautification in that plot of land. We have expressed that support every time the vision funding came around. It's never been approved. The proposal to do the parking lot on 8th and Omaha is based on a number of assertions. There's not been a traffic study or a formal survey of employees. There's some claims by employers that, oh yeah, our people would not do the parking shuffle. They would ride the trolley. We would like to see you put some counters in the parking lots at New York Street and other public parking lots. How many people are there during the week? And then really ask people, ask employees, would you park eight blocks away, ride the trolley to your part-time job, and, the, and not park in front of your business and move your car every two hours? We'd like to see some documentation of this assertion. Finally, um, and probably most importantly, we have to stop grabbing the park as free space every time there is some developmental need for downtown. Oh, nobody's using that. It's free. Get it. Let's pave it. Let's put up a building. We need a space for a gym. Um, and I have colleagues who will follow up clearly 
on that part of the conversation. So thank you very much. Thank you, Suzanne. Well, the chair now recognizes Stephen McCarthy. Mr. McCarthy, same ground rules, three minutes. And if you'll state your name for the record, please. Uh, my name is Steve McCarthy. I'm president of Friends of Rapid City Parks. I'm here to oppose this uh, parking lot. There are, um, in the proposal by Public Works, they anticipate having free uh, parking there and a free shuttle downtown. There are two other parking lots, the one at Founders Park that's less than 500 yards away that people could park free now and, and the city could shuttle, or we could go over to um, the Journey Museum where there's a parking lot that was built for 300,000 visitors that is never being used, which we could shuttle people there. We could also, and because I'm a businessman, I, I, I look at the numbers, you have a parking lot that's there now. If you think it's going to work to shuttle people um, from that parking lot to downtown, why don't you try the parking lot that's right there right now, run a shuttle, it has adequate number of spaces, and we'll see how many people use it before we start off on a, on a venture when we can prove it. So those, those are the things you consider. Today, that parking lot is free to park in. I drove by it 45 minutes ago. There is one car in it. People are not going to park there and walk downtown. They're going to have to be shuffled downtown. And there has been no cost in this proposal to the, to, that realizes the cost of running a shuttle probably 12 hours a day, five days a week, that will add to the city budget. It's a bad idea. It's being placed in Memorial Park, which is a sacred park to us in the Friends of Rapid City Parks, and it should be um, taken off the docket. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. McCarthy. The chair will now recognize Don Frankenfeld. And while you're approaching Don, same, same ground rules, three minutes, and if you'll recognize yourself for the committee. If I'd recognize myself? Yes. Yes, please. <laughs> Do you have a mirror? Uh, I'm, I'm uh, Don Frankenfeld from Rapid City and I appreciate the three-minute constraint. On We're your mirror here, Don. So. What's that? You're the mirror. That's We're scary. We're your mirror, yes. <laughs> uh, fortunately uh, for you and maybe for me, uh, Steve and Suzanne have pretty much said what I think needs to be said. I just want to anchor, uh, echo that. I, too, am a member of the board of the Friends of Rapid City Parks. I believe that our parks are our single most important economic development attribute. There's a lot of other things that are attractive about the parks, but the parks attract the kinds of people that Rapid City can reasonably expect to attract to locate their businesses here. And what distinguishes us from every other city of our size? Mount Rushmore, for sure, and also the fact that at least until recently, and I think, I hope still now, Rapid City has more parkland per capita than any other city of comparable size in the United States. It's important to preserve that. There are sentimental reasons not to desecrate Memorial Park. If you look at the uh, map that has been proposed at the bottom, it says Memorial Park West. That's not a marketing term. That's what it is. It's to memorialize people who died and those of us who grew up in this town take that very seriously. We're taking a huge amount of the real estate and paving it over. Uh, that's not a fitting memorial, in, in my opinion. And as Suzanne said, you know, when you look at the financial, uh, brief financial statement that was submitted, it talks about uh, the costs of doing the work, and it naturally omits the cost of the land. It attributes no value to the land. It's hard to attribute value, particularly to sacred green space, but it has value. I think we all know that. It has economic value. It has sentimental value. And I'm, I'm all in favor of Mr. Seftner's uh, offering to help us with parking. I applaud him for that. There are good places, I think, where 
uh, we can have additional parking, but not in Memorial Park. So I hope you'll uh, reject this proposal and, and uh, look for a, a saner place to put the thing. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Frankenfeld, and also for thank you for identifying yourself. Uh, we'll move on to uh, item number 11. Um, since I have no more uh, public comments for, on any of the remainder items, and I'm not skipping anybody, item number 11 is to approve resolution of 2014 through 15 a construction fee resolution for Prairie Meadows subdivision, which is a water main oversizing project. The, uh, if, if I may recognize staff, first of all, Dale, do you want to try to handle this? I believe the reason this is on non-consent is Mr. Estes has an interest in this. Okay. Uh, Mr. Estes, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I just need to abstain from this. I am uh, one of the developers on this project. Motion has been made to approve, and uh, do I have a second? The chair will now recognize, second by Alderman Clayton. The chair recognizes Alderman Scott. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I guess the, I guess the appropriate person to ask this question to is Mr. Estes, if he doesn't mind taking a question. Thanks, Brad. I know that you're interested in education, as you mentioned on this lift. So if you could educate me on this. I noticed in the construction fee that this was set up that the amount being paid off for the oversize is per acre, and yet this is being divided up by lots. How does that work in that type of situation? Maybe it needs to go to Dale Tech. I think it needs to okay. go to Dale Tech. Uh, City Engineer Dale Tech. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Th that's an excellent question. The water main that was installed through Mr. Estes's property serves a greater area than just his property. Therefore, we take a look at the entire basin, if you will, that is expected to be served by this water main. And the only equitable way to divide that up is by acre. So if somebody has a larger lot, they pay a little more because they're going to use more water and have more benefit from that oversizing component. So. The by acre or per acre um, allocation of cost for oversize is fairly common, and we do that all the time, both on water and sewer. So then, Dale, am I understanding that correctly? So if a portion of the land is platted and eight <coughs> acres is divided up into 40 lots, then as the building permit is pulled, that's when I understand this fee is collected. When the building permit is pulled on a specific lot and say it's only 0.2 acres, they only pour, pay that, rash, that, that proportion of 0.2 of an acre cost for the oversize? Precisely. Thank you. That's what I needed to know. Thank you. I yield the floor. And the chair will now rec oh, don't need to recognize you this time, okay? All right. The motion on the floor at this time is to approve a res resolution for a construction fee for Prairie Meadows Subdivision, which is an over, excuse me, which is a water main oversizing project. Not seeing any further lights. Those in favor of the motion, say aye. aye. Those opposed. Motion carries. Item number twelve is is an appeal of denial of request for an exception from Fisk Land Surveying and Consulting Engineers Incorporated to allow an alley to be used as primary means of access for proposed subdivision at 925 Dilger Avenue, which is also known as the Garfield School property. And uh, the chair will now recognize City Engineer Dale Tech. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In the last 24 hours, staff has met with the applicant and we've reached an agreement on standards for development on this property. Therefore, I would request that this committee acknowledge the applicant's request to withdraw the appeal. I have a motion. I have a motion. Do you want, I'll, I'll recognize you as soon as I get a second. Okay. Uh, second by uh, Alderman Wright. Jerry, you have the floor. Will the applicant state they're withdrawing the appeal? Please state that to the record. Uh, the chair will recognize Janelle Fink. Good afternoon, Janelle Fink with Fisk Land Surveying here on behalf of Habitat, and we do agree to withdraw our request. Thank you. Thank you, Janelle. Um, I'm not seeing any more lights, any more questions from the committee. 
those uh, in favor of acknowledging the uh, the uh, request to withdraw the appeal for denial say aye. Aye. aye those opposed motion carries thank you folks appreciate the extra effort and staff to you folks for coming forward with coming up with a compromise on this hopefully it'll be very workable and look forward to seeing this project come out of the ground thank you folks appreciate it uh, item number 13 is the downtown parking ramp request recommendations and uh, the chair will now recognize Alderman Wright. I thought I hope it says right based upon the, I'm going to make a recommendation we deny the development of the parking lot at Rushmore Road and Rapid Creek at Omaha on the basis of the testimony before us as I understand that um, there's adequate parking in other places the shuttle would work I'm most concerned and I'd like verification of the Go ahead. statement the that there was an agreement between the school district and the city that this would be torn up as part of the Rep City Central High School is that officially a document is that agreed to the uh, chair will now recognize uh, public works director Terry Wallstorff, oh, sorry. Um, I have a point of order question, if you'll state your point. Uh, Alderwoman Scott. You need a second. Oh, he did second it. I thought I recognized him. Yep, okay. Yep, he did second it. Um, so I'll share that on now, I'll recognize. I'm sorry, the, Mr. Chair, for yes. clarification, who made the motion and who seconded? The motion. Oh, you made the motion. I believe oh, you need, the, a, I believe I you need a second. Okay, I heard a motion over here on the, my left, okay? So let, let me start over again. Uh, those in, uh, this is for uh, recognizing the requ res request recommendation for a downtown parking ramp. If I, can, I thought I heard a motion to make this, so. No, I made a recommendation to not do this, mm -hmm. and I asked for continuous to, to speak, but we didn't get a second. Okay. Okay. So uh, thought I had a motion and a second okay is there a second to the motion to den deny for discussion purposes um, second by uh, Alderman Clayton is to deny the request okay I you have the floor Mr. Wright well I, I was concerned that um, Susan brought up the comment that there's an agreement made when Central High School encroached in the floodway correct me that this would be torn up and turned back into a floodway. And is that true? Is, it, is that an agreement binding? And Mr. Wolfsdorf, are you aware of this? Chair will recognize uh, Public Works Director. That's my number one concern. My, my understanding is that was a, I use the term verbal commitment um, between a previous mayor and the Friends of the Park organization. Uh, there's no formal agreement in place on that. I actually wasn't aware of it until yesterday. So just been, Susan, would you mind commenting on that? If you'll identify you. yourself one more time, Susan. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Suzanne Martley, Friends Rep City Parks. Um, there was news coverage of the agreement. It was a, it was a school board action and school board members were quoted as saying, this is a fair swap. Friends of the Parks is no longer going to object to our building and building the gym in the floodway. Originally, the school was going to put the science center in the floodway, which was not legal under South Dakota law. Um, they could put a gym in the floodway because recreational facilities are a recognized use of parkland. Whether parking for something besides art galleries, museums, and recreation, and public swimming pools is a, re is a legal use, you probably ought to check. Um, but the agreement was between the school board and Friends of Reddit City Parks. The school board reported to the council. It, was, it will be in the minutes of um, December um, 2010, meaning I could provide you the information. But it, there's, we don't have a contract or a signed document. So just to clarify, thank you. That was a verbal at a, at a school board meeting, but our mayor at the time consented. Okay, but we have no formal document filed with. There would the be minutes, meeting minutes. minutes. Okay. The other one, other question, and I'm going to yield the floor. Was 
uh, a comment that um, a suggestion that we use the existing parking lot and a shuttle to test the system. I think Steve made a very wise recommendation there. But I, I, I yield the floor. Thank you. The chair will now recognize Alderman Estes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I can't support this motion, and I'll tell you why. This is a public meeting. It was on the agenda for Mr. Waltersdorf to give his report. You've made a motion to kill something he hasn't even reported on. It needs, he needs to give his report. It, the, 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 the money came up. We turned it over to Public Works. He needs to present his report. I respect your opinion. I respect the opinion of the park people. But this is a televised uh, public meeting. This is on the agenda. And you want to kill something before we, he's even public, we've made the report. So I guess I can't support this. I may support something later, but I think we need to let Mr. Waltersdorf pre uh, present the report that we sent them off to prepare. Thank you. I withdraw my motion. Thank you, Brad. But I still stand by what I earlier said. Thank you. <laughs> I understand, <laughs> folks. Uh, uh, let me let me go to uh, Public Works Director uh, Terry Walterstorff for a presentation first before we get into the motions. Can you give us a little background, please, Terry? Good afternoon, Chairman. Yes, thank you. I certainly will. A um, little background history. Recall about two months ago, Destination Rapid City uh, presented an opportunity for funding for parking um, to uh, accommodate some of the parking or perceived parking parking problems downtown. And you tasked Public Works with coming back with a recommendation. Uh, Public Works staff uh, met with staff from the Finance Department, which oversees the leases of the existing parking lots, uh, Destination Rapid City, and uh, Rapid City Transit Department, which is under Public Works, and also the Parking Code Enforcement. And, and really what we did is we first we, we took a look at, at what we have out there. And it, again, attached to the agenda today, are several maps and I'll just kind of put them up on the overhead for you city currently operates five uh, leased parking stalls in the downtown core area which are highlighted uh, this area right here is the the area in question that we were proposing the additional parking area But again, we operate five parking um, Lots in the downtown core mostly leased parking spots uh, the parking lot that's over on the uh, the corner of uh, St. Joe and 5th Street Includes both leased parking spaces and meters. So there's about 135 parking stalls within that one uh, about 400 and 70 give or take parking stalls in the parking ramp uh, we have the 7th Street parking lot um, and then this is the 8th Street parking lot over on Main and 8th Street so uh, the first thing we did is we said okay where's the parking problem downtown where do we have shortages and what we did is we went we went to the existing parking lots that we had and we looked at the lease rates uh, the amount of leases that we have on those parking lots I did attach that document to the agenda today Hopefully that zooms in a little bit. Really what we'll find and what, what we determined was that the greatest parking need that we see downtown based on the leases and the waiting list for leases is in the west half of downtown. Uh, parking lot four, which is actually over by the stock growers, it's full, but it has one on the waiting list. Parking lot five, which is the one where Presence Plaza is proposed, um, up until last week, there was actually 11 leases available. You could go downstairs and pull a lease. My understanding is that within the last week, Assurant has pulled those four leases. Um, they actually had, they were looking for additional spots because we currently have, if you go to 6C and 6U, this is the parking ramp. 6U are the covered spots. 6U are the uncovered up on the top ramp. You see we do have a waiting list there. Uh, my understanding is several of them on the waiting list are um, some that Assurant had on the waiting list that they wanted and also there were some that had put their names on the waiting list in anticipation of President's Plaza starting and, and not having their existing lease over there. Not that they necessarily wanted the spot. If you look at lot 7, this is the one over on 7th Street right off of Main. 
Uh, that one has, as you can tell, 165 people on the waiting list. A lot of people want to park over there. And the next one here on A Street, 86 on the waiting list. Uh, again, that one's way over, we're overbooked, and there's a huge waiting list. So as you can see, we, we quickly started looking at the west half as being the area where we seem to have the, the greatest need. Um, we understand that one of the problems downtown is that employees don't have a place to park. I think a lot of the problem that you see on the, the on-street parking is that you have employees who don't want to pay the 30 to $40 a month for a lease, and they go out and they play the car shuffle all day long. Every two hours they move their car and they're taking up spots that should be used by customers. So that was one of the, one of the main considerations we looked at. So from a background, again, we, we kind of queued in on the west half as being the area that really needed the, the additional parking downtown. Some of the design considerations we looked at, um, number one, $2 million may sound like a lot of money, but when you're talking about a parking ramp, it doesn't do anything for you. You really can't do anything with $2 million as far as parking ramp construction. Um, even $4 million won't build you much. Uh, a parking ramp, a parking stall in a parking ramp costs about $20,000 to construct. That's based on our previous experience, based on the numbers that the county just had from their new parking ramp expansion. That's a pretty good conservative number. Expect about $20,000 for construction cost. If you build a surface parking lot, you can build a parking stall for about $2,000. So there's a huge change. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is the ongoing um, maintenance and upkeep on a parking ramp is way more expensive than a surface lot. I mean, just the maintenance of the structure can be rather expensive. We just let a contract for about $300,000 for general maintenance work on the parking ramp across the lot here. So uh, that's something to consider. We did look at the existing parking lots that we had and, and considered whether we could put a parking ramp on it. Uh, really what it comes down to is the existing parking lots out there are not size enough to install a parking ramp. They just aren't big enough. You would have to buy additional buildings, demolish the buildings, and get a bigger footprint. The only one that would work is the one where Presence Plaza is proposed to go. That one is sizable enough. Uh, we did want to consider some RV parking. Code enforcement pointed that out to us that one of the needs they see on a regular basis is the people, that tourists that come through town, whether it's uh, buses or larger RVs, there's no place to park downtown. Uh, just when you think about it, I had never really thought about it. There's no place for those those people to park and, and utilize the services downtown. And I guess I already touched base on, on the cost of additional property acquisition. Essentially what it came down to is this. For $2 million plus any additional funds we could throw at it, there really was no other location that we could install a parking ramp. It just was not economically feasible. So we looked outside the box literally in this case. Um, and we looked at the opportunity of maybe pro providing a surface parking lot and, and whether or not that would function. And to be quite frank, when the thought was, the idea was first presented to me, I, I, I didn't think it would work. I, I didn't think that Destination Rapid City would buy in on it. I questioned logistically whether it would function or not. The more we had discussions, the more we had discussions with Destination Rapid City and Dan Seffner had, he, he was our go-between between business owners downtown and, and whether or not they thought it was a good concept. Dan has relayed back to me that generally the, the feedback he has gotten has been positive. Um, what we are proposing downtown is a surface parking lot on the northwest corner of 8th and Omaha. Essentially, it's about 350 parking stalls. Keep in mind right now what we see here is we have a uh, little over 100 stall parking lot here and the, the tennis courts, which are scheduled to be removed, it just has never been budgeted to remove, and, and some enhancement projects over here. Our concept is this. Install a surface parking lot and operate a shuttle service, which would operate in the downtown core essentially on Main and St. Joe between 9th and 4th. You could do about a 10 minute to 15 minute interval. We could utilize one of our existing City View trolleys to operate that system. Times would operate very similar to what our transit system operates right now. It would be 
although in this case it would be Monday through Friday from about 7 a.m. to I think it's 6 p.m. I did include for you operational costs. I know that was a comment that was made earlier. We estimate the operational cost for that system to be about $130,000 a year. That's, that's operating cost, labor, gas, fuel, repair on the trolleys. We do get 50% reimbursement from our federal uh, reimbursement on that. So our actual net cost to operate the shuttle would be $65,000. We would recommend that it would be a free shuttle service. I think that's the only way you would get employees to utilize it. Um, and again, it could also be utilized by traveling public and the you know tourists downtown in that downtown core. Um, I did uh, did include some estimated costs. We estimate the parking lot. I, I did get some updated numbers yesterday. Uh, we think the overall total cost is going to be closer to about 1.6 to 1.7 million dollars. Uh, we think the parking lot cost is a little higher. Park improvement cost will be slightly lower than I indicated here. So instead of the 1.5 million, it's probably closer to about 1.6 to 1.7 million. Uh, I, I would like to address a couple of the comments made earlier. Uh, as far as the past promise to, to the friends of the park, I, to be quite honest, I was not privy to the communication or, or the commitments or promises that were made either by the school board or or a previous mayor so I I can't really speak to that I I can speak a little bit to the proposal that was originally presented to the vision fund this was the proposal presented to the vision fund and I I shouldn't assume but I'm assume friends of the park were in support of this project probably I will say this, granted the parking lot is substantially smaller than what we're proposing. It did, it did include a parking ramp over here, or parking lot, excuse me, in this location off of 8th. What we tried to do is we, we tried to somewhat mirror what this proposal was with a larger parking lot, but still incorporate some of these stormwater quality features and some of the beautification enhancements. Um, as I explained to the, the group from Friends of the Park yesterday was, to me, you can't just do the parking lot without the enhancements that go with it, nor do I see the enhancements happening without the parking lot. There, it seems like any time we do park enhancement projects like this, there's something else driving it, something. In this case, it's probably a parking lot that would drive those enhancements. Um, so anyway, we, we tried our best to, to somewhat keep in the spirit of what the proposal was a few years ago when they brought this forward for Vision Fund. Um, obviously, the parking lot's bigger. I'll be the first to admit that. Um, we did not do a detailed parking study downtown. We did not. We, we don't have the staff, the 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 budget, or the the time to, to perform that. Um, there was a comment about using the existing parking lot as a trial run. Here, here's what I would say. I think part of the reason the parking lot's not used right now, it's dilapidated. It's in tough shape. Um, there's a lot of people that just tend to hang out there at certain times of the day it's not well lit later at night I don't believe um, I think if we're gonna do it we've got to do it right from the very beginning it has to be a lot of uh, there's a lot of steps that would have to happen before this project moved forward there would need to be buying from business owners downtown um, there's there's just a multitude of steps that would still have to happen but uh, look that's that's our recommendation Here, here's I'm going to Summarize it the best I can here. When we look at parking downtown, I don't have a parking problem on the east half. I just don't. Um, like I said, there's there's spaces available. Until last week, there were spaces available over in the 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 uh, St. Joe and Sixth Street parking lot. the The problem is down on the the west end. Um, Assurant currently leases 85 parking spots in our parking ramp. They they have, um, and we've had several, several communications with them, they would be interested in relocating out of that parking ramp and utilizing this free, free parking area. And that's going to free up 85 spots plus the uh, 11 leases that they just pulled over at the, uh, the St. Jones 6th Street lot. Uh, I don't believe they have any leases currently in that 7th Street parking lot that is substantially overbooked. But if we, if we can get businesses to relocate out of that downtown core with their employees it would free up substantial parking downtown and 
we believe that's probably the only thing that, that will really work. And with that, I'll answer any questions you have. Mr. Walterstorff, I'll, I'll get to the uh, council members here in a second. But uh, just for clarification on my part, essentially what we're doing is trading asphalt for asphalt. Am I understating that? I, I don't have the exact footage comparison. It's, it's comparable right now when you talk tennis court size and the existing parking lot size. When you look at, when you look at that drawing we had, and again, this is just a schematic drawing. Um, I, I would guess our, what we've got proposed here is slightly larger than what's there right now. I don't think the tennis courts take up quite this area, and this parking lot is, uh, doesn't quite encroach down this far, I don't think. So it's slightly larger than what you see there right now, but it's, it's comparable. Thank you. Uh, the chair will now recognize uh, Alderwoman Scott. Thank you, Mr. Chair. May I ask some questions of Mr. Wolstersdorf? You may. Thank you. Terry, thank you for, for looking at this. It, it sounds like you did look at other recommendations as well, and, and it, it was plural, the request that we made, and you've come back with one. Um, on this, though, you, you've brought up a couple points. One of them is the indication is that, that this proposal would work if we relocate or got businesses downtown to relocate their employees. Besides free parking, what other incentive would the business, I mean, is, are you suggesting the city enter in an agreement with these businesses that they won't allow their employees to take up parking space? It just seems to me that that's binding their hands of employee rights to park where they want to. Yeah, there's probably a couple options there, and I don't know if I've wrapped my head around the details there or not. One option is obviously you try to promote it as free parking for the employees. Look, a lot of the employees that work downtown work for probably barely above minimum wage in a lot of cases. Um, they just can't afford $30, $40, $50 for a parking lease. Um, I think it's a good service for those employees. It, 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 it's a PR move that we would have to really try to work with the employees and the employers, and hopefully the employers help to push some of those, in, you know, in, not push, but highly recommend that they utilize those parking areas instead of parking out where the customer should be parking. Another option you could look at is taking some of these leased parking lots and turning some of the leased spaces into metered spaces. I mean, that, that's going to force some of the employees to find other places to go um, or start plugging the meter, but typically the meter cost is, on an hourly standpoint, is more expensive than the, than the lease cost. But uh, that, I don't know if I have a great answer for your question there. There's, I mean, there's a lot of things to consider yet on that. To follow up with what um, some representatives from Friends of the Park also brought up, since you looked at this in Memorial Park or the western portion of Memorial Park or as it's named West Memorial Park, there are two other locations that if you provided the shuttle service, Founders Park and the Journey Museum, would that provide the same service since it's technically outside of the downtown area anyway? We, we actually did talk about that. Um, in fact, when, my first thought when the, when the idea was floated to me was I, I didn't quite believe that people would park here. Um, simply because it seems separated from the downtown area. And I, I think there's a mental thing there with people that there's only so far they're willing to walk or only so far they're willing to park and ride in some cases. This location seemed close enough. We talked about, well, we got the New York Street lot over here. Why not use that one? Well, that's fine except during events like over the next two weeks where it's totally packed full of um, uh, Black Hill Stock Show people. Um, it's the, the mental thing of getting people to be willing to park over there at the Journey Museum and taking the shuttle downtown. Will they do that? Can you get RVs to make it over there? Look, this is a highly visible location. Um, we want to keep that shuttle within a fairly short 10 to 15 minute max turnaround time so it's you know constantly going through that core and through those businesses. Uh, we just logistically didn't think another parking lot further away, further separated from downtown would, would function for people. Another follow-up question is, um, 
in order to serve the downtown area, and you had mentioned the, the potential parking in President's Plaza, that parking would not benefit the western portion of downtown? I don't think it will, and the reason I say that is I got people on a waiting list right now that weren't willing to go over there and pull a lease today. They could have gone over there right now and gotten a lease, and they're not willing to. They sit on a waiting list, and they complain that they don't have parking. So do you think that sending out letters to the people that are supposedly on the waiting list and asking if this option would get them to utilize this system and remove their name from the waiting list, to me that would be a, a, an affirmation that this is a viable option. Without that, and Lord knows our weather conditions, especially since the Lord is reminding us this winter of our gusty winds and our cold weather, um, I, I have a tendency to agree with your first concept or your first thought of, it's gonna be hard to get people to park and wait for a shuttle, even if the shuttle shows up five minutes or later, mm -hmm. in order to take that round trip downtown, especially if you're targeting employees who, as you've already mentioned, are you know, generally working for minimum wage, slightly above minimum wage, and now they're gonna have the hardship of parking someplace else that they have to stand out in the cold before they can go downtown and work two hours? Yeah. I, here's what I'd say to that. I, our recommendation really is a recommendation of where you can potentially spend this money from Destination Rapid City. We just, it didn't make sense for us to spend it anywhere else in the downtown core based on the expense um, to construct the parking ramps and based on where the needs were. So what, what we're saying is, if you're gonna spend the money, this is probably the best place to spend it. Keep in mind, our next step is not to start the design and the construction of the parking ramp or the parking lot. The next step would be to proceed and get more details on this location and this option. I mean, there's a lot of things that still need to fall into place. We haven't had, we haven't presented anything to the Parks and Rec Board yet. Um, you know, we haven't, done a floodplain analysis and making sure that we we got all our necessary floodplain uh, permits there's, there's just a lot of a lot of hoops to jump through and it's this is really the first step in the process I need I need to know whether the council thinks this is a worthwhile location to pursue further as it stands today I'm not convinced this is worthwhile but my final question before I yield the floor you did mention consideration of open park or vacant land, basically undeveloped land in the downtown area. Was any consideration given to any type of the um, currently developed portion that could be converted to a parking lot if the city purchased the, the, the existing buildings? Yes, what we did is we looked at some where we had existing parking lots and whether there were structures adjacent to it, you know, so that we didn't have to just buy half a block out. Maybe we only were buying one or two more buildings, but at the end of the day, that. The money that we have for this, it, we don't have enough money to do the project. If I'm going to buy a building, I'm probably going to spend a half a million dollars by the time I purchase the building and, and, and demolish it. And right there, I've used up a sizable chunk of the money that was allocated. So at least that was considered? Yes, we did. And we did. do you have um, a list of the buildings that were considered or anything we, else? Where we actually, the one that, that seemed to work best is the one over there in 8th and Main. And we looked at the buildings directly to the, the west. There's a couple buildings there before you get to, I think there's a couple restaurants, so we stopped short of that. But like I said, once we looked at that, that, that footprint was barely big enough. We could get a ramp on it. It wouldn't be the most optimum ramp design, but we could have gotten a ramp, a ramp on that. But again, we would have probably spent a half a million dollars acquiring buildings and, and clearing the lot, then starting to ramp. And, to be quite frank, you'd, you'd, we don't have the money to build a ramp. Thank you. I yield the floor. Thank you. Um, we'll now recognize, the chair will recognize Alderman Wright. To my colleagues, I apologize for making a motion so early, but I read the conclusion, so I was decided then, especially after hearing this comment about the commitment by the school board and apparently unofficially by the city that this would be part of a memorial park. I, I don't support this for also the reason that, as Steve said, let's try it. We already have a parking lot. I'm sorry, it can be repaired and lit. I don't buy that. Let's put a bus on there if you want to. Let's try it. Let's get our contract haulers or whatever, see if they'll work it. 
I'll say another thing. When you say the $2 million, it's almost like the destination rep city gave us $2 million. Let's figure out a way to spend it. Let's look. I think you missed one option. I'm not going to discuss that right now. I think there's another option for that $2 million that was not even included in this analysis. So I, I can't support this. I, I would certainly, uh, I just can't see paving floodway. I just can't see taking a parking lot and doubling its size. It's just so anti-park, anti-floodway. If we wanted to try what's there to address some of the employee parking in the West End, that'd be okay. If we were looking at a real solution for parking on the west side of town, I'd be okay. But historically, we have some issues that we've made a commitment to. I think we need to follow through first. I don't think we need to be looking for a place to spend money. And I think the ongoing expenses there of 62000 is there. If it's beneficial, fine, but I will not support this. Um, the floor has been yielded. Uh, we'll now go to uh, Alderman Estes. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'll make a motion to continue this for 30 days and would like to keep the floor if I could. You may. I don't have a second just yet. I'll second it. Okay. Yeah. Second. You should get beat, <laughs> Jerry. <laughs> Alderman Scott is the second. You have the floor. Thank you. I, um, first of all, Terry, I'd like to thank you for your work on this. Appreciate that. Second of all, I, I really appreciate the remarks from the people um, from the park, uh, parks, Mr. McCarthy and, and those people. I, uh, it, it doesn't take much looking into my background and to know what Memorial Park means to me personally. So um, when, you, when you look at preserving floodway and such, uh, I, I fully concur. I guess my question that I was curious about, if I could ask uh, Mr. Waltersdorf a question. You may, Mr. Waltersdorf. Terry, do you think it'd be at all possible if you looked at a, a large employer that had a lot of parking requirements like Assurant and took a lot like over to Journey and just tried to work out, a, I mean, would, if you looked at what that pressure that would relieve I mean, you'd be working with one entity. They're out shopping for parking. They're they're running a trolley or they're running a van for their employees as is. Do you think that's a worthwhile uh, thing to just pursue with with existing paving that we already have? It's certainly a possibility. Um, here's what I say: Assurance probably not the only player here. Keep in mind when you when you looked at those. Huge waiting list. They're on that 7th Street and 8th Street parking lots. Assurant isn't using any of those. So there's, there's some other players in the game here, so to speak, that that aren't associated with, with, with Assurant. Whether we could get those groups to utilize a parking lot that's located more over by the Journey Museum, um, I guess we'd have to find out who's on the waiting list, and, and it, you know, certainly something we could review. Thank you. Mr. McCarthy, you raised your hand. Did you want to address my question? I, I do want to address my question. Thank you. If I, I may. I, I, Mr. Mr. McCarthy, uh, uh, Mr. Estes Steve has a question McCarthy, for you. McCarthy, and I'm president of uh, Friends of Rapid City Parks. I think it's a very good idea to approach one large employer. And uh, as city council people, you're in direct, you are in control of the largest employer downtown. And as you consider this option, why don't you consider the option and how popular this option would be to have city employees park in the Journey Museum and bus them here each day? It's not a very long distance, and um, I think you'd get some blowback on that, as all employees will when you have to move across Omaha. And you're, we're just, we're a society who likes to see our car out the front door, whether we're a, a waiter at a restaurant downtown or a retailer. So I, it, it just doesn't make logical sense uh, that those parking lots haven't been used to ferry people down here. But we could clear out an enormous part of the parking downtown if all city employees would go to one of those lots. And I think if you guys could insist on that, you might not be sitting up there after the next election, but uh, it, it, it's very tough to do. People don't want to do that. 
and people aren't, and as one of you brought up, I think it was Jerry, people are, aren't going to wait 10 minutes or 15 minutes to get picked up, and 10 minutes and 15 minutes to get picked up when their kid's sick at, at Pinedale School and they got to get home to pick them out, out of school. So it, it just isn't reasonable. Thank you again. Mr. Estes, do you still have the floor? I appreciate Mr. McCarthy's uh, comments. I, uh, I guess I yield the floor. I, I made the motion to, to end uh, like February, de delay it till February 25th, I believe, is the uh, 30 days, the meeting 30 days from now. Is that all right with the second? February. I yield February the floor. February what date? 25th. 25th. Yes. I yield okay. the floor. Um, Thank you. Uh, Mr. Wallstorff, you have the floor. Just so I'm clear, was there any additional information you were looking for from Public Works? I, I have some uh, questions for you, if not from the rest of the committee members. Mr. Wallstorff, could you verify the, the, the asphalt for asphalt question for me and just kind of make that uh, known to us as well? The um, the timing on the shuttle for the uh, parking lot, if I understand it right, this would be under uh, Mr. Sagan's jurisdiction or responsibility and his timing, if I understand it correctly, just to verify that the, when they put out a schedule, it is adhered to with a certain very small window. Am I correct on that? Yeah, yeah two things. We, we can certainly uh, get the uh, square footage of the asphalt. That's not a problem. On the the ten minute turnaround, Correct. this this is different than our fixed route because our fixed route we actually have times and we we do our best to adhere to our our time frames. Yep. They do a very good job of it actually. Um, not early and not more than five minutes late. I think is is what they they try to get. In this particular case, it's 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 a fixed circle that you're yep. not going to have a specific time at the individual stops. You'll just need to know that it needs it'll be coming by every ten minutes. Um, or less, 10 minutes if you just happen to miss it. So it, we, it won't be specific times at each stop. It's just a continuing loop and a very, what I would call a fairly small footprint. I understand. And if we can get that in the, the next report, I'd appreciate that. And then the... Uh, just, yep, I didn't ahead. interrupt, but what exactly do you want in the next report? Well, the, 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 the timing on that, to verify that it is a, a very narrow window that the buses or shuttles in this case would be arriving and departing. Um, because I, if I understand Mr. Sagan's set up or, or met MO or method of operation for his bus system, he has very, very specific timing for his routes. And I would assume that this, and I don't want to make an assumption after the fact, but at this point, assuming that the uh, schedule for the buses would be running on a fairly tight schedule. And that, I, if I can under, have that understanding as well. I, I wouldn't call this a tight schedule they're just going to continue to drive in circles all day long okay so there's there's really not a schedule their schedule is from seven in the morning to six at night that's essentially the schedule there's not there are no specific pickup or drop off times throughout the day okay you got start time and an end time okay all sense? right because the the question came up earlier as to uh the uh, standing out in the environment waiting for the sh shuttle so uh, just so that the clients had an understanding of approximately when the next bus would be coming so they would not have to stand outside they could stay in their vehicle if the climate was such sure. then the next part is um, if we can have a a little bit of understanding of, of and I don't realize that you haven't put a study together or a counter together for that but if we can have a, a general idea of if we did some shuttle movement of one parking lot to this location, what would that population or census be looking like at that point? I know it's a little hypothetical in there, but, but essentially what I'm looking for is a, kind of along the line of a population count for this. Are you asking us to have some meetings or public input meeting on this proposal or with business owners downtown if that'll be helpful in the next for you, 30 days if, if that would be helpful for you maybe that answer could come from the bid board uh, for, for example but um, so that you wouldn't have to have a separate public meeting or uh, this would be in addition to 
for example, the bid board to be on their agenda. I don't need an answer now, Terry, so it's, okay. it's all right if, it, if you think about it and if it's, if it's not a good idea, then okay. we can, I can address it in some other form. And then um, I also want to address the point about the Journey Museum as being a, a parking lot for this uh, environment that would be introduced if we were to move the employees over to the Journey Museum for a parking lot. That could not be held on a consistent basis because occasionally and it's and it's getting to be more frequently that that parking lot is filling up so it, it, the the term used earlier was that it's never used for any parking uh, it isn't quite accurate uh, it, it that is changing and there's some other potential happening with that parking lot on the north side there don't know if it's going to happen but that parking lot may be consumed as well so and then the other part of it is RVs getting parked at the journey museum I think we may be able to give you a count from the Journey Museum as how many RVs parked over there. But that would be another event that would be only taking probably high potential of being placed in the, the summer times when the RVs are coming to visit us. Um, I think I agree with your point about having a better understanding what the storm water would be uh, impacting on this location. and. Um, I think my final question has to has to do with uh, um, keeping this keeping this consistent, and I also appreciate the concept of uh, beautifying this area as well. Be really a spruced up because, in the idea that I'm looking at for the storm water would be there is some drainage over in that area that comes off of the um, family thrift parking lot that drains towards that area right now. And that would this would be a, a great improvement over that. So, just some things for consideration, some thoughts to uh, expound upon a little bit further, or elaborate a little bit further on. So, any uh, thing else? Do you need some clarification for on my part? No, I, I you, you mentioned the parking lot at Journey Museum does get full occasionally. I, I know in my discussions with Jeff Beagler is that. The Founders Park parking lot is more and more being utilized, so I think it'd be very difficult to utilize that parking lot. Um, whereas this one that we're looking at, it's really not associated with any other specific use, other than the fact it would give some parking available for this new Legacy Commons, which is tying in with the Promenade project. You know, right now there's really no dedicated parking area for that, other than what we see over there right now. So. Um, to do a trial run, we could certainly do that, but if we're going to roll it out, I think you have to do it right from the get-go or else it's not going to work. Um, if you don't do it right from day one, people aren't going to use it, and then they'll never use it. So, Thank you. Uh, Mr. McCarthy, you wanted to uh, address a point. Do you remember what it was? I know you had a question for us or a comment for us. It's been over three minutes ago, so I don't remember anymore. <laughs> Thank you. I just wanted to make sure you saw. I did. I saw your hand being raised from it in the back back there. Okay. All right. Everybody understands the the motion is to continue for till uh, February twenty fifth. Quick question related to the issue. Okay. To be clear, the issues raised by Friends of the Park and related to the tennis court and the Central High School will be involved in this report and analysis. Correct. I could share. Are you guys asking it's for an updated report in 30 days? Or are you just asking for 30 days so you can consider all the information? Terry, if I may ask the uh, Alderman Wright, uh, is that what you're proposing is coming from the school board minutes? Is that what you're proposing? I'm asking, let's back up. We're going to get a 30 day, he's going to come back in 30 days and give us a recommendation after reevaluating and talking about some of the other sites. I think that's the motion. And I just want to make sure that the issues raised by Friends of the Park related to the tennis court, the parking lot, the ultimate plan for Memorial Park, the agreement to clear the floodway, et cetera, et cetera, is included in the evaluation. If there's some tint of legal binding agreement, we need to know about it. Fair? So the answer is, do, do I expect that in 30 days? Yes, I do. I don't know if anybody else does, but I do. 
And, and, and it, all questions that were raised, I think, need to be addressed. And, and Mr. Walterstar, if I may interject one more thought. If the 30 days, uh, February 25th, comes around and you're not able to uh, get all the information or gather your information, just update us on February 25th that, that you have to do some more research. I just wanted to be clear on what you expected in, in 30 days. So yep. I'm, I hearing, know I I'm hearing a various list of, uh, of, uh, of topics. So I know I put a lot of things on your plate here for consideration. So, so, yes, sir. If I could share, like, some of these things we, we wouldn't know really until we got f further down the road if the decision was made to go this way. Are there legal lo logistics behind between you know, behind using that location in the park? I, that's something we would we would vet through the attorney's office if it's something you wanted to pursue. Normally, we wouldn't necessarily dive head first and spend a lot of staff time researching that. We haven't spent the one thing we haven't talked about here today is the money, folks. We don't have any money to do this. I don't know where you're going to pluck. $2 million or $3 million or $500,000 out of our budget right now. The money's just not there. If you've got it, I got street cell fix. That's a simple fact. We haven't even talked about that issue. So we were looking at it as a low cost, a low cost way of providing some additional parking. That's, that's just how it is. So it, funding's just another, another piece of the puzzle. And those are things that would have to come into play as we went down the road a little further. Thank you, thank you, Terry. And I don't know if the Parks, Parks Department folks are here, but um, they probably one of the comments they won't, won't appreciate is this is under the jurisdiction of the Parks Department currently because Absolutely. it is involved with the tennis courts and then the tennis courts accommodate parking for the, or, or excuse me, the parking is accommodated for the tennis courts. So it's under their jurisdiction currently. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Suzanne Martley, did you have an, an additional comment? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Since uh, we are the ones who asserted that these promises were made, we'll make that our homework <laughs> for between now and the next 30 days, and we'll make all the documentation available to Mr. Walter Storff's office. Appreciate that, Suzanne. Thank you very much. Um, oh, thank you. Um, Amanda, uh, Amanda, um, Suzanne, would you do us a favor too, making sure that information is provided to Mr. Walterstorff so that we can get it attached to the next meeting? If we get all of this put forward, we'll make that in the report. Chair will now recognize Alderman Clayton. Thanks, Mr. Chair. And I think in keeping with the question that uh, Alderman Wright asked, if Suzanne is going to make this information available to you, Terry, uh, in, in terms of what she asserted that there were some, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just use the term, informal agreements. Um, I, I would appreciate if those were bounced through the attorney's office so that we have a feel for how binding they are, because uh, depending on how those statements were made and un under what circumstances they were made and who said what to whom, I think is going to have some far-reaching implications about just how binding they might be. So I, I think if we have a legal opinion as well, once those things surface, it just gives us a, a little better feel for how powerful or binding those statements may in fact be. Thank you. Thank you. And the Chair now will recognize Alderman Estes. Thank you, Mr. President. You know, I've, I'm listening to all this. and. and uh, and first of all, I want Terry to be able to give his report. I think I need to make a substitute motion just to acknowledge his report because, listen, he could do backflips in the next 30 days. We're not going to approve a surface lot. We're not in a position to do that. I guess if we decide that we have sufficient need. Point of order. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just, sub -substitute. just because we're, we're piling it. Excuse me, Mr. Estes. Uh, just to clarify, your substitute motion is to what now? Just acknowledge his report. Acknowledge the report and a second by Alderwoman Scott, and you have the f f floor. Apologize. I guess, I guess I'm getting a little excited here, but anyway. I get that way. I mean, <laughs> the Friends of Rapid City Parks, I mean, I, I would appreciate it if you could still get that information, Mr. Waltersdorf. Um, 
there's no way in heck. I mean, what we're asking you to do is is not possible in 30 days, I don't believe. And um, you've you've come up with your conclusions. I think we need to acknowledge it. And if there's a if we feel that uh, we need to revisit this need for uh, parking and find the home for the half a million dollars at Destination Rhapsody, I guess I guess we'll we'll address that then. But but I, I think I think Mr. Waltersdorf is busy enough without um, maybe investigating something that probably uh, wouldn't would nobody would have an intention to support. Anything else? Thank you. Great, great uh, motion. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my original one to save a slide. <laughs> just, just, just to clarify, we, we are going to um, acknowledge this report. Sorry, I'm having a difficult time reading through all my notes here. Um, to acknowledge this report only. So you've got, in my mind, Terry, you've got all kinds of time now in front of you That's for coming up with these requests that I've understood to be the original motion was to uh, have a 30-day delay. Um, so uh, not seeing any other lights, motion is to acknowledge. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed? Thank you, motion carries. I Thank you. <laughs> here we go. Next one is an update on the solid waste facility campus. And Carl, you have the floor. And I know you will be more diligent with us. We this. will be very diligent. Carl Murbach, superintendent of the Rapid City Solid Waste Division. Just a quick update that we have met substantial completion on our citizen campus. If you've been out there lately, you know things have changed greatly. We are phasing in a lot of our services out there. And the good news is, is that uh, despite one of the windiest months that we've had in history in Rapid City, not one customer in the month of January was turned away because of we did not reach our, we met 30 mile an hour winds. We were able to handle that. We still have some details to work through, but I think that's some of the positive things that are there. There are a number of things that are up and running, the new scales, the automation and that that is in there. Just some of the little details that go with the $4 million construction project. Why I'm primarily here today is to talk about our 24 hour drop off site. As part of our design, we designed a, at the entrance to the landfill, open 24 hours, similar to our three drop off sites around town where you can come in at your convenience, drop off your recycling, drop off your yard waste, 24 seven, 365 days a year. Part of that design was to put in the lighting, the paving, all of the amenities there that will make it a very much a convenience for our customers. Part of our original plan was to invest that money down at the landfill and eventually take a look at the Fairmont site where we do have a location there, a drop-off location. This lo is no more than just two miles from the landfill. That is built on the old landfill. If you've been through there lately, you know that is not the best of facilities to do and would have taken a lot of money to bring that up to what I would call good standards for the public, including lighting and all the other things. As part of the opening of the new citizen campus, we are looking to eventually start closing down that site. The yard waste containers are already gone. Those are moved down there. And what we are looking at is on the 1st of April, that's actually that Monday will start on March 31st, to remove those last three containers and move that operation down to the landfill. Between now and then, that gives us an, a significant amount of time to start educating those that use that facility through signage, through PSAs, through a number of different things to get them to understand that we've got a nice facility down there. It shouldn't be that much further to go. But again, we have to start transitioning out from the old to the new. So that is my proposal. I believe there may be some city council uh, action required to close down that facility. Uh, again, we would look in the future to get that back to the parks or make it uh, you know, an area that can be used. But again, we are looking at 
the 1st of April to make that transition, use that time period between now and then to get out to the public and educate. We will also be looking to hold an, an open house, a ribbon cutting, probably somewhere in the mid-March to mid-April. Uh, timing, let us get things done, let the weather improve a little bit here, invite everybody down at that time to visit the new facility. With that, I would be more than happy to answer any questions that you have at this time. Thank you, Mr. Murbuck. Appreciate the report and an update. And also, I want to acknowledge your staff for not filling up my mailbox, uh, email box with, uh, we're closing the, the landfill because of wind. Uh, so that's a great change. Thank you for doing that. And then um, I'm in concurrence with the uh, understanding of the uh, uh, Fairmount uh, property being have to do, be closed and uh, everything and so the awareness level for the public so that it doesn't get turned back into a voluntary uh, landfill as, as well. So I know we'll be, have to be sending out crews to clean up that and if we can get encourage the, the public on it and I just I wanted to say uh, hopefully you can do your ribbon cutting on a very windy day again. So. Thank you. Now the chair will recognize uh, Alderman Clayton. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And first I'd like to make a motion that we acknowledge the report from Mr. Murbach. And I'd like to hold the floor if I may. And Carl, if you saw me smiling up here when, when you said mid-March, I, I leaned over to Jerry and I said, hey, you'll schedule it and we'll get a blizzard because mm -hmm. it just seems to happen that way. <laughs> and it seems like everything we've scheduled together out there uh, has been forestalled by some sort of weather. Um, congratulations on, on, on that citizen campus. Uh, I got out there and I had a, a small look the other day when I delivered some paperwork to the engineer and after you guys gave me a big pile of homework. Mm -hmm. And I, I also agree with closing down the Fairmont. It's, it's very convenient to me, but uh, having lived by there for a long time, there's a, there's a dip in that, that one corner of that parking lot you could probably put a swimming pool into. So uh, I guess one of my questions though would be, you know, through public awareness and letting people know that the change is coming, what will be the plan to keep miscreants from going in there and just dumping stuff as we've seen in the past? You know, you know as well as I do, we've had people go in there and dump whatever and then with the prevailing northwestern wind, we've had all kinds of goodies rolling down the, that hill there on Fairmont. So, uh, you know, closing it's one thing, but then keeping people out I think is going to be the, the second issue. So any plans on that? At least one of our initial thoughts is to tear out the approaches to there, the, the, the ramps, the concrete drives off of the uh, Fairmont Boulevard, and I think that will help there. There's probably not much that can be done, as you said, other than turning it into a skateboard park where you've got some nice ramps and dips. <laughs> That's about the only good use I could see for it. Uh, once we do this, once we get this started, I think we're going to have to look at demolishing somehow what's left there. There's not much left there. Not investing any more money into that than we have to except for demolition. Fair enough. And then we will probably have to talk. And then, Terry, I know this is news perhaps, but just to the west of there is the remnants of an old parking lot from the old ball field. So if we tear out the approaches to what is now the recycling area, I guess we'll have to talk about what the future plan will be for that parking lot. It, it's not utilized very much, but if it's accessible, if people are frustrated by not being able to illegally dump in, in the old recycling spot, we're going to probably find some junk that, that piles up into that parking lot. So we, we might need to look at both those pieces of asphalt to decide what the right thing is to do. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll yield the floor. Thank you, Alderman Clayton. I, I, I'm, I'm not suggesting a parking lot, Carl, so no. we, won't, we won't go there. Um, <laughs> would our, would our uh, no, uh, our employees, no, they're not even talking about that. Uh, if I can have the decorum back again, thank you. Um, the uh, next part is to um, acknowledge this report. Any other questions? Not seeing any. Those in favor say aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Burbach, appreciate it. And I really am sincere about the, the emails that we're not getting anymore about the landfill being closed. So kudos to your staff. Um, 
Next item is item number 15, recommended changes to tax increment financing guideline and policy. Patsy, do you want to speak to this uh, at, at all to help us understand uh, I believe we're coming forward with a tabling motion. As you know, we've been working on Plan Rapid City to identify, you know, a long-term plan for our community. Part of the recommendation coming forward is some additional financing tools. What we'd like to do is wait until the comp plan has been submitted for adoption and, and um, move forward with the recommendations based on that long-range plan instead of twice. We don't want to, we don't want to bring these changes forward twice, so that's why we're asking you to table it. And that comp comprehensive plan is very well put out and uh, presented and we have it in a draft form so I want to say thank you to you and all the staff uh, Mr. Limbaugh to uh, everyone that's been involved in that clarion coming forward with that initial draft that looks very good. One thing so I would your like recommendation. to add. Yes, yes I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I would like to add we did link up the um, memo from EPS it's the economic um, portion of our comp plan so those recommendations are linked up online to this item so that you can start looking at some of those recommendations before the comp plan is actually adopted and you're still maintaining your recommendation to table this mm -hmm. thank you uh, chair will entertain a motion recognizing alderman alderwoman scott thank you mr chair patsy mr chair may i ask patsy one follow-up question to you may patsy it is linked is it very lengthy I believe it's 20 pages. If it's, it is, it is 20 pages. If if it's possible, can the uh, each council member get a co hard copy of that so that we can? Absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate that, and I appreciate you um, putting this and you and and Mr. Limbaugh putting this in order so that we don't have to do duplicate yeah. effort here. So yeah. um, I'd like to, unless it's too late, I'd like to make a motion to table. I'll chair will recognize the table in motion and also the uh, uh, 20 page document to, to read over. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, not seeing any, uh, there is no debate on a table in motion. And those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Second. Motion carries. Motion by Alderwoman Scott to adjourn. Second by everybody else. The, those opposed? Uh, motion carries. We are now adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>